Those rear springs are finally settled. They sit nice now. So with the ride kit fitted in the previous episode, I've now decided to embark on a total rebuild of the car's steering joints and front and rear suspension in upcoming episodes. So watch this space. But in this episode, I'm taking a trip over to the Dordogne in France to see the in-laws. And whilst there, I'm going to check out a rather special classic car show and rally that takes place there every year. Cirque du Rampart is a weekend of historic motor racing and concours competition set in the town of Angoulême in the Chiron countryside in southwest France. And this year we'll see the 50th edition of this famous annual event. After my long journey, I pull into the gates of the beautiful Chateau de la Couronne, owned and run by British couple Mark and Nicky for over 15 years now. This exclusive luxury holiday rental and wedding venue is famed for its privacy, fabulous food and amazing hospitality counting many Hollywood A-listers amongst its guests. But now I'm meeting with Jean and Frédéric to hear their story of their classic French pride and joy. The Citroën Mahari has become a classic symbol of France and its automotive industry. Anyone with memories of a 1970s summer beach holiday along the Mediterranean or Atlantic coast will remember the classic design of their doorless convertible vehicle with a fabric top favoured by fishermen and campsite workers all from a bygone era. Manufactured from 1968 to 88, the vehicle famously featured in cinema greats such as the Amiga Man in 1971. Built and based on a 2CV chassis and engine, the Mahari was produced in limited colours of orange and beige. <laughs> this one obviously was orange, but is now beige. That's a Citroen. Yeah, it went. 2CV engine, yeah? 2CV engine, yeah. yeah. Used to call it the Ike Carrier. Yeah, yeah. Carrier. Yeah. So how old was it? 1975. 1975. And, and the 14 in 2009. Yeah. And, and come, I come down from Paris to Angoulême, this is stuff. Wow. Uh, for, it's, for 100 kilometers. And we need we need 10 hours. 10 hours? 10 hours, yeah. That was tough to me. And I take it you didn't have this covering all the way around as no, well? No. The weather was it hot? Was, it was out. It was good to break. Can we switch off, John? Yeah, go on, go on. We can get gas. So, what's it like? I mean, this is a classic car. Well, it's, it's considered classic, a classic car in France. It's a classic car in France. And, uh, so it's um, maybe 800 cars like that yeah. in, in Charente. 800 cars like in, this, yeah, left. In Charente, not more. Charente and Charente Maritime. This is plastic. It's only plastic. <laughs> only plastic. What about the environment? <laughs> <laughs> um, this chassis is 2CV. Two, uh, 2CV two CV. Two. Two CV chassis, yeah. yeah. So tell me, when you've got a classic car in France, yeah. How does it work out with tax and everything else? No. Is it cheaper or more expensive? No, it's cheaper. Yeah. Same in England. Same in England. Yeah. Yeah. You know because uh, uh, because insurance with la with this car I pay less than one hundred euro a year. Yeah. Look inside there. Explain to us the the controls in there. So that's obviously the gears. Yeah. How many gears? <laughs> How many gears? Uh, four. Yeah. Four only. Yeah. And top speed? Soft. No. What's the top speed? What's top the fastest? speed is uh, nine, uh, 90. 90 miles per hour? Yeah. Oh, 90, no, 90 kilometers, kilometers per hour. Yeah. 90 kilometers. Yeah. When there, when there is wine behind, yeah. we, we go down, maybe 100. Oh. Wow. Downhill. With downhill, wine and yeah. Go down. yeah. I'm going down. Yeah, we like downhill. Yeah. There's plenty of hills here, by the way. It's a very and because see, you you don't need a lot of petrol inside. Uh, maybe uh, five liters each kilometers. And tell me, this is a working car, really, isn't it? What you carry in the back? It's this way. We carry in this. We can carry a lot of things inside. Yeah, a lot of drunk people in the back. Yeah, <laughs> and a, a lot of young women too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
can tell you've never done this ever, have you? This is the first time this has ever been on this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll put the knack, I'll put the knack. Okay, I'll do this one. <laughs> so let's hear Frederick's side of the story. So tell me the lovely story yeah, about so when your, that, dad, your dad bought it new, yeah? In my, 75. Yes, in 75. I was very, very young. No. Uh, you still are. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was 14, yeah. And I had a, a, my friends, friends, girl. We all had long blonde hair, so my father loved to take us in the car, going around the village, you know, to be proud of all these young girls in the boot, in, uh, not in the boot, in. So the... you weren't lying, John? No, 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 no. No, no, no. no, 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 no Full no. of young girls in the back? <laughs> <laughs> and now. You know, and then he changed his car, bought another one, put this one in the barn, and uh, several, long time after. Ten years ago. And 10 years ago, he yeah. found it back in the van and said, you've got my girl, you can have my car, yeah, and that's it. Ah. <laughs> so he, he just did, he didn't just get the girl, he got the girl and the car. Yes. Well done, John. <laughs> I can't beat that, <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> Come on, John. Hurry up, mate. I've got a classic car show to get to. <laughs> I'm sure he just got me here to help him fit that new canvas kit. Another 10 hour journey. I don't quite know what to expect. I mean, this is the first European car show I've ever been to, but I think it'll be interesting to see how the other half do it. Well, spoke too soon. The Brits have arrived. It's a weekend that includes a non-competitive road run for amateurs following a route through the countryside, two concours competitions and a competitive race around the walled circuit of the old town, bringing people together to Angoulême's historic marketplace to sample the delights of the local produce. Yeah, en blanche, mais elle était un peu plus avancée à l'avant. Wow, the facial vega. You know, I remember these cars when I was a kid and they seemed an awful lot bigger than this. This just seems like a, a giant pedal car. Maybe it's just me. Getting older. Now this is a pretty car. Peugeot 404 convertible. Look at the back, it looks like a Ferrari. Oh, look at this, I used to have one of these, a Mercedes 280SE four-door. Oh, hang on, looking at the wheels, separate beauty ring, that tells me it's a 250SE, let's see, yeah, 250SE. Fabulous cars. That's got the M129 engine in, same colour as well. This is an interesting car. A pretty one too. A Le Mans. Anyone know what this is? It looks like a TVR from the front. The Renault Alpine, king of the rally cars. Pour la 50e édition du circuit des remparts, se profile les rallies avec.
This is an event first held in 1939 as a Grand Prix and Formula 2 circuit race, only to be disrupted by the outbreak of World War II. The event was later resumed in 1947 and used until 1951 as part of the F2 Championships. It attracted racing superstars such as Andre Simon, Raymond Sommer and the world-class Fangio. Over the years, this has now become an international class automobile event, bringing together classic cars from all over the world and all eras. But I was still a bit surprised to see so many British cars here in attendance. Now this one could be interesting to you guys. I could be doing one of these in an upcoming episode. So what's the space? BMW 3 litre CSI. Like a spaceship. Oh, come on, I think it's got to be beer o'clock by now. The Alfa Romeo Spider. Oh, this is definitely one we could revisit in an upcoming episode. I did a full restoration of one of these a couple of years ago. Although the one I did was a cam tail. This one's a boat tail. So we're finally on the way to the bar. Oh, hang on a minute. What's this? A 280 SE coupe? Oh, I'll have to take a look at this one. For sale as well. Concorde de Tat is a competition for the best restored cars in Angoulême. The 10 shortlisted cars are displayed in the Old Town, where they are then judged by an international jury. Original authenticity and condition are key, and judges are strict on modifications. The final 10 are an eclectic mix from all countries and all ages. There's a couple of beautiful Alfa Romeos, one of Giulietta, remember the movie Day of the Jackal? There's also a stunning Volvo P1800, as driven in TV's The Saint. So at this point, I thought that was basically it. And then every corner I turned, there was more and more interesting cars everywhere I looked. Bugatti's story is an interesting one. The Bugatti company was founded by Italian-born Ettore Bugatti in 1909 in the then German city of Mosheim, Alsace. Then in 1918, Alsace became French once again after the Treaty of Versailles, 
where the cars were produced right up until the 1950s. They were known for their beauty and as one of the most successful race cars ever produced. This is just like being transported back in time to the 1930s. Old heroes of the racetrack. Chime and clocks. The smell of petrol. The roar of an engine. What could be better? British contingency. Home from home. Oh, this one looks familiar. Even John Aldridge's is making an appearance. <laughs> Now this is my personal favourite. This is a Chenard and Walker. These were French automobile manufacturers from 1898 up until 1946. They were also the winners of the first ever Le Mans 24 hour endurance race in 1923. Fancy some Le Mans automobile? Apart from Angoulême being a beautiful place, there really is something for everyone. I mean, you'd never expect to see a Buick typewriter, would you? The sight of the Fiat race cars tells us we're nearing the track. The race takes place around the historic wall circuit of the old town, where cars pre-war up until the 1980s navigate and compete around the tight corners of the street circuit that hasn't changed since the first race back in 1939. One of the very few motor races to take place within the walls of a town, only Monaco and Pau are the other French city street races. You know, my friends, Peter and Beverly Caisley Hayford, used to own a beautiful chateau in Po, which to me just seemed like a small, sleepy little town on the border of the Basque Country and Biarritz. 
They'd regale stories of the town shutting down each year for a whole weekend of mayhem and classic cars. And although I visited several times, it never coincided. If only I'd known. Seems like I missed out. Thank you for watching this episode of Gary Mather's Classic Obsession. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and join me next time as I head down to one of Footman James's celebrated coffee and chrome classic car meets at the beautiful Chateau Wimpney in Worcestershire.